So the guys over at Sidey hit me up to send me their new small form factor CPU cooler, the Big Shuriken 3. At only 69 millimeters in height, it features a full-size 120 millimeter fan and boasts some pretty impressive cooling power. So that is what we'll check in the following. Just a quick side note, I installed it in my DAN case and the height limit for CPU cooler is only 48 millimeters, so it'll be an open air test. So in the box you will get a bunch of hardware and accessories as well as the cooler. Most of the accessories are comprised of the mounting hardware for all platforms and thermal paste. Now unfortunately the cooler had a few bent fins on the bottom. It's not the end of the world and it won't affect the performance but I wish it wasn't like that. I feel like it's caused by how the packaging is made so I guess it will be a hit or miss if you decide to buy one. Otherwise it was in great condition and it looks really good with that black shroud around it as well as this clean fan design. In fact the fan has rubber dampening pads to reduce vibrations, a detail that I particularly enjoy. The fan's cable is also sleeved in black so that's great too. And finally, they shape the fin area so that it doesn't get in the way of memory modules, as well as the GPU and the IO shield. Already installed in my PC was an Octua NHL9 cooler, one of the few tiny coolers that actually fit in the Dan A4 case. So this is what I'll compare the Shuriken tree against. Now for the installation, I had to get my motherboard out of the Dan case. Not that easy of a task with such a small case. Then I removed the Noctua cooler I had installed prior. It's pretty simple in fact. Comparing both coolers, you can see the size difference. It's pretty big. The Noctua only has a 92mm fan while the Sites is 120, but both are slim profile fans. And the fin area is also a lot bigger on the Shuriken tree. Finally, the Noctua is only 37mm thick, while the Shuriken is almost twice the height at 69. So I peeled off the sticker from the contact surface and proceeded with the installation. I checked for a proper fit and the fin area is nicely cut to surround the other components without touching them, that's a great design. So first things first, I installed the backplate under my board, then I added the included rubber spacers as I have an LGA1151 motherboard. Keep in mind that it also fits modern AMD CPUs as well as the larger LGA2000 lines of Intel CPUs. Then I added the metal side plates where the cooler screws will go and screwed those parts in place. Although thermal paste was provided with the cooler, I installed the same Noctua paste that I had with the Noctua cooler just to make sure it didn't affect the test results. And then I installed the cooler in place. There are two screws that you need to secure in place through the fan's blade and it's a pretty easy process overall. Now that it was done, I connected the fan's cable and we were good to go. I personally think it's a really good looking cooler, pretty compact yet it has a dense fin stack. So although it will be too high for my Dan case, I think it would fit nicely in most mid-size mini ITX cases. I went ahead and reinstalled the motherboard in my case, replugging every cable in the right spots and securing the board down as well. As you can see, the fan is a bit sticking out but that was expected as I said earlier. Still, I think it looks amazing, apart from the fact that it's too big in my case, and I like that it doesn't block any PCI slots nor RAM sticks. I actually tried removing the fan to see if the case would close that way, and it was just a little bit too high still, so you would need custom side panels or the Windows kit for the Dan case. And also, just idling, I was getting temperatures at a little over 50 degrees, so it wouldn't be reasonable for gaming or any extensive use. Now to the benchmark. My CPU is the i5-8600 non-K, so it's a 65W CPU with a base clock of 3.6, but it will go up to 4.1 by itself. So I ran Prem95 for a little over 11 minutes on both coolers, this puts a 100% load on all available threads of the CPU, so it doesn't represent real life performance, but it gives a good idea on the limitations of a said cooler. Starting with the Noctua, I was getting temperatures up to 95 degrees Celsius by the end of the test, which is pretty high if you ask me. It didn't thermal throttle, but it would have probably if I let it go for a while, since it didn't seem like it was going to stop. Then was the big Shuriken 3, I was getting temperatures up to low 70s by the end of the test. 
It was pretty stable, in fact it got there pretty quick but it wouldn't go over that even a few more minutes in. So this was a lot better and much more desirable for CPU temps. Again, this being a synthetic load, you need to take these results with a grain of salt as for general gaming, the Noctua has been keeping my CPU in the 60s most of the time as it never really reaches 100% usage continuously on all threads for that typical gaming usage. However, if you want to do rendering as an example, then the Prime 95 test would give you a good idea. And finally, my CPU has a pretty low power consumption and it's not overclocked, so I'm pretty sure the Big Shuriken will not be able to keep any CPU at acceptable temperatures like it did with mine. In terms of sound, I recorded both coolers when their fans were at their top speed, so here's a little sound sample. So in conclusion, I think this cooler is great. The main downside would be the band fins under it, although they can be seen when it's installed. Still, it's a bit unfortunate. Apart from that, the fan is good quality and pretty quiet. The cooler looks great and it's quite compact for the performance it gives in return. And the Dan case is one of the few that won't accept this cooler's height, but it should fit in most cases and on most motherboards. So, if you're looking for an air cooler like the Hyper 212 that performs well while still being compact, this would be a great option I think as it retails for about 50 bucks and I think it's actually on sale right now for 45 bucks. I will actually go back with my Noctua as my side panel just won't close, but otherwise I wouldn't mind keeping it in my current build. So I'll have links down below if you want to check it out for yourself. So as always, thank you for watching, make sure you like the video if you did and if you didn't, just let me know why in the comments below, otherwise don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.